Although Nintendo games are generally created to cater towards a younger audience, there are moments throughout each of its franchises that can leave you absolutely horrified. Now we've already looked at the worst ways to die in a previous video, but in doing research for that one, I realized I had to create a separate one about the worst game overs in every Nintendo franchise, where a few lead to some incredibly horrendous situations that I need to showcase. This can involve bad endings, gruesome deaths, or annoying in-game mechanics that can get you killed, negatively affecting your experience. Oh yeah, before I get started, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell button to stay notified when I upload new videos. The first franchise we're going to look at in this video is of course Nintendo's flagship Mario series, which only has one bad game over scenario that I can think of, in what happens to you in Super Mario Land 2, the 6 golden coins. If you run out of lives at any point during your playthrough, then all the coins you've collected that are used to open the final door leading to the Wario boss battle are removed, meaning you then have to go back and reclaim them from each of the world's bosses before you move on. This isn't a huge requirement as you've already completed all the levels leading up to them, it's just a bit of a pain, and something that really doesn't happen often in Mario titles. The next franchise we're going to look at is my all-time favorite The Legend of Zelda series. Where there's one extremely terrible game over that I can think of, and what happens if you run out of time and don't go back to the first day in Majora's Mask. Here you'll be shown a terrifying cutscene where the angry moon crashes into Termina, completely destroying it along with Link. In this situation, the Majora's Mask wins the game, and can be seen surviving the destruction by exiting out of its flames and floating off into the darkness. As a kid, this game absolutely scared me, and this bad ending was definitely a huge part of that. There's one game over screen that's actually pretty dark for Nintendo standards, in what happens to you in the second prime entry for the GameCube. Here you'll see Samus's visual communications go offline. Then you'll get an alert saying that her heart is beating erratically, before it all flatlines and she just dies. This is a viscerally horrific scene, as even though Metroid is a pretty advanced franchise in terms of its more mature-oriented gameplay, kids and young teens still pick up the series because it's made by Nintendo, and they were probably as surprised as I was when I first experienced this. Although there are many, many horrible ways you can die in the Donkey Kong franchise, there's only one bad game over situation that I can think of in the cutscene that shows up in Donkey Kong 64 for the N64. This only triggers if you don't stop King K. Rule in time in the Hideout Helm level, or just simply quit the game at any time. Then a cutscene will play, showing the Blastomatic machine powering up, then aiming its blast right at DK Island. Now, it's only implied that it's destroyed, as everything cuts to black before you actually see anything happen. Either way, it's definitely a strange game over, especially as it's just triggered by wanting to go to the title menu. Next up is the relatively small Kid Icarus franchise, where I'd have to say the worst game overs comes from the Game Boys of Myth and Monsters entry. That's because every time you die in this game, Pit turns into an angelic spirit and drifts off to what I'm going to assume is heaven. Okay, I know this isn't as terrible as it seems, but they did take the time to include it in such a simple game, so I need to point it out. I did have a bit of trouble trying to figure out the worst game over from the Kirby franchise, but instead, I decided to go with a bad ending from the N64 Crystal Shards entry. This occurs if you beat the Miracle Matter boss without collecting all of the prior Crystal Shards, showing you a cutscene where Kirby flies off thinking he saved the day, but the Queen gives the camera a menacing glance at the last second, implying that she's still possessed. I guess it is safe to say that Kirby is meant for kids if this is the most menacing thing that I could find from it, but if there's something I did miss, then please let me know in the comments. Now I couldn't identify any bad game overs in the Earthbound series, where all that happens to your party members if you die is that a message appears telling them that they're badly hurt, and asking if they want a do-over. This puts it more in the easy RPG realm if your characters just regenerate if they die, but it's still definitely a fun series to play, and you can actually try it out for yourself, as Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings are now out on the SNES Nintendo Switch Online, so go check them out. 
The Rail Shooter Star Fox franchise is the next we're going to look at, which really doesn't have a bad game over in any of its titles, but has a few bad endings I want to mention. In Star Fox 64, if you take the wrong path to the planet Venom, then you'll encounter a fake robot version of Andross, meaning your playthrough was essentially useless and the real wizard is out there somewhere. Now, the DS Star Fox Command entry has nine different endings, including one where Star Wolf returns, exiling Crystal, where she becomes emo and changes her name to Cursed, one where Dash decides to terraform Venom and ends up ruling it with an iron fist that eventually leads to another war, and one where Crystal dies and Falco has to try and cheer Fox up. Honestly, Star Fox Command was a strange game that I don't think is canon, which sort of explains why some of these endings exist. One interesting thing about the Fire Emblem franchise is that there aren't really true game over scenarios, as characters dying is just a part of the story, and can actually affect what happens next. The only time you'll ever see one of these screens is if a character who's critical for the story progressing forward dies. Then you'll be forced to restart that mission as you can't move on without them. I guess you can kind of make up your own game over, especially in an expansive multiversal world that Fire Emblem resides in, but definitely awakening zombie apocalypse features seems pretty awful. Another very kid-friendly Nintendo franchise is the platforming-based Yoshi series, where the only bad game over I want to show is the one that takes place in Yoshi's story for the N64. When you run out of health in this game, then the Yoshi you're using will get taken away by the Toadies, and you'll never be able to play with that color of character again. Once each and every one of your Yoshis perish, then you get a notification that the game is over, and you have to restart everything going back right to the beginning. The only somewhat terrible game over from the Wario franchise I want to showcase is what happens to you in the Wii Shake It entry. Now, you don't technically have lives in this game, and dying doesn't result in anything but having to restart the level, although if you do run out of time trying to save Murphle, then the Shea King will appear and terrorize you. Here, the King's Shadow will overwhelm Wario, and drag him to a different dimension where he shakes him down, taking any coins that he's collected and yeets him back to the start. I know this isn't the most gruesome game over, but in a series where you barely die, this at least is something a bit different. Another series that doesn't have definite game overs is the Pokemon franchise of games. So I'm instead going to look at what is the ultimate game over in people who've died playing the mobile Go entry. I quickly went over this in my Worst Ways to Die video, but here I want to give a few more examples of how exactly this can happen. According to PokemonDeathTracker.com, there was a man who died of a heart attack after catching a rare Lapras, an 18-year-old who broke into someone's house to catch a Pokemon and was shot to death, and two people who actually walked off a cliff's edge, but somehow managed to survive even though officials say they should have died. I get that it is a bit morbid looking at real people's pain, but if you're going to die over a video game, then I have to call them out on it. Up next, we're going to look at the Pikmin franchise which has one bad game over ending I can think of, and what happens if you don't collect enough ship parts in the first installment. When 30 days is up, Olimar realizes that he's running low on oxygen and needs to leave the planet, taking off in his ship regardless of its state. Unfortunately for Olimar, the ship is not ready in this state to take off, and will stall in mid-air, causing him to fall back to the planet to his death. Oddly, the Pikmin will then carry Olimar to the Onion and plant his corpse in the ground where he will become Pikmar, a human-Pikmin hybrid. Just strange. From the Ghost Hunting Luigi's Mansion franchise, there's one bad game over scenario that I can think of, where if you die in the third entry, then King Boo will become victorious. That's because he will capture you in a painting, locking you away with Mario, Peach, and all the Toads, leading to a dark mushroom kingdom devoid of the mustachioed brothers. King Boo is a pretty devastating bad guy, as he's one of the only ones to ever defeat Mario, and I guess in this case, Luigi as well. Next, we're going to look at the Splatoon series, where you can't necessarily game over, but if you die in solo mode, then a very sad animation will appear. Here you'll see your character basically disintegrate into a bunch of ink, and your squid soul will float off into the sky. 
To add to the insult, a screen appears that says splat, and your soul continues upwards with a very sad look on its face. This is really a bit more disturbing than anything else. The final franchise we're going to look at in this video is the Ensemble Fighting Super Smash Bros. series, where in the newest Ultimate title, there are two bad endings that can be achieved in the World of Light game mode. The first occurs if you beat more light spirits than dark ones, and face Galim alone, where upon defeating the beast, then Darkon will appear, claiming victory and engulfing the universe in darkness. If you do the exact opposite and face Darkon, then Galim will appear, turning into a ball of light that explodes and destroys everything. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I really hope you did enjoy this one. For today's video, guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. Of course, I left out both Xenoblade and Animal Crossing, as neither really have any game overs or bad endings, so there just wasn't really much to say about them. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and go follow my Instagram at CopycatGamer, where there I upload some cool clips and items from my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!